in this video, I'm going to test you to see if you can tell which images are AI and which are real. I'll show you how to create these images yourself. I'll also show you some tips and tricks on how you can turn them into the most lifelike videos possible. So to start off, let's try a test. So I've got 12 rounds of images and you will have to decide which ones are AI and which ones are real. So make sure to keep count of your own scores and see how many you got right at the end of it. Okay, let's start the countdown. So how many did you end up getting right? I bet you found it harder than you thought it would be, as these AI images are getting increasingly realistic looking. And I believe the special source is this Flux 1.1 Pro RAW mode, and they say this mode is for seeking authenticity, which tries to emulate that kind of amateur photography that you would take with your smartphone, say. And I think it does an incredible job at giving the images that really natural, realistic look. Later in this video, I've got another test, but instead of using just images, I've taken the images and turned them into videos. So make sure to watch the video test later in this video. So let's have a look at different images made with the Flux 1.1 Ultra mode and the RAW mode just to see if there's a difference. I've been using a couple of different websites to create these images, and I'll leave the links down below. The first one is foul.ai, and here you can choose the Flux Pro Ultra model. And if you click on more, you can scroll down and select the raw mode there. The other website that I use is replicate.com. And as you can see, they've got the Flux Pro Ultra model as well. And if you scroll down, you can see they've got the raw option there. So for pricing, it's actually pretty cheap. As you can see here, it says it's about six cents per image, which I think is pretty good. So you can generate about 17 images per dollar. Okay, so I'll give it a very simple prompt to start with. I'll do an image with raw mode on and off just to see if there's any difference. Okay, so I've put in a happy dog and you can also change some of these settings if you want to. I'm gonna make it into a 16 by nine image. Okay, so I've generated an image of a dog using the raw mode on and off. And this is the dog in the raw mode. And I think it looks incredibly realistic. It's got that natural lighting on it, and it's picking up a lot of fine details, which is helped by having more resolution in this new Flux model. And here is the image created with RAW mode off. Now, it does look really good, but for me, it's missing that natural lighting, which really does sell it as looking like a realistic image. So I guess it's all down to personal preference, but I really like the look of the RAW mode images, if you want to go for realism. So here is another example of a raw image. And as you can see, it looks very realistic. And I found that adding certain things into the prompt box does help as well. So in this one, I've put an image file. So I've put in img dot, then four random numbers, and then a photo file. So you can either use dot jpeg, dot png, or for this one, I used dot dng. And then after that, you can put whatever you want in the shot. And sometimes it does help to create a more realistic image. And in this one, I've added in bad lighting and taken on an iPhone, just so it tries to emulate what it would actually be like to take a photo in that situation. As when you pull out your phone and take a photo, the lighting is mostly not great, so I wanted the image to have that feeling to it. 
and I think it's done a really good job. It's a bit chaotic and all over the place, but it does make it feel like a real photo. And again here, I did the same prompt, but replaced party with cat, and if you showed this to someone, they would have no idea that it was AI. It's pretty scary. And this is using the same prompt, but with raw mode off. And while I do think it looks pretty realistic, I still think that the raw mode image does look better. So if you want to create some insanely realistic images, definitely use this model. Now I've got another test, but this time instead of just images, I've taken images and turned them into videos. So you have to try spot which ones are real and which ones aren't. Good luck. So how well did you do on the AI video test? Did you get any right? Did you get all of them right? I think the video ones are a bit easier to tell, but I'm still really impressed with how realistic they came out. Now let's have a look at how to create these videos. I've been using Kling AI and Minimax to generate these videos. They both have a free option where they provide a few free tokens. So it's worth checking out. I'll make sure to leave the link to these in the description below. So I'll start off with Kleng, and all you have to do is go to AI videos, image to video, and then drag in your image. And make sure you're using the Kleng 1.5 model for better results. I'm just going to give it a simple prompt just to see what it does. So I'll just write a tiger. And make sure to have professional mode on as it has richer details and superior quality. I'm just going to make a five second video. And what's good about Kling AI is you can generate up to four videos in one go. So I'll just choose three for now. And I usually add these words into the negative prompt area. So I'll click generate. And now I'll jump over to the Minimax AI video website. And it's the same process. You just go to image to video, drag in the image. I'll give it the same prompt. And with Minimax, you can also choose to have this enhance prompt on. So it will just add a bit more to the prompt. So I'll just keep that on. Okay, so let's have a look at the Kling AI videos. And this looks incredible. It's got that really natural movement to the tiger. Again, it looks incredibly realistic. And here is the Minimax version. And it looks okay, but it's definitely not as good as the Kling version. But then I added into the prompt realistic handheld documentary style video of a tiger in Minimax and it created this, which I think is much better. It's done a really good job with the tiger's mouth as it slightly opens and then it has a really natural movement as it rises. Here is another image I used in Minimax and I think it's done an incredible job with the movement. It looks extremely lifelike and I'm very impressed. And of this one of a woman crying I used in Kling, and it looks very realistic. But videos don't always go to plan, as you can see in this one I had an image of a mountain biker, and this is what Minimax created. It's a really tough image to be honest, as the cyclist is coming towards us, and it probably didn't know what to do with it, so it just kind of makes him float, and then he cycles off in the opposite direction. Now, if you want to take your videos a step further, then this is how I do it. I use Topaz Video AI, which is an AI upscaling software. You do have to pay for it, but I think it's definitely worth it. So I'll try a couple of videos. I'll start with the video of this lady laughing. So the settings I use is I put a two times upscale in the output resolution. I use the Proteus AI model, 
and then I add some manual parameters. And then what I find helps is making the frame rate 60 frames per second, as it's originally 24. And here is the result. And Topaz Video AI has done an incredible job at just adding a bit more detail and adding in the 60 frames per second definitely makes it feel a bit more lifelike. It may be hard to tell if you're watching on this YouTube video as this video is probably locked at 24 frames per second, but believe me, I'm watching it at 60 and it looks incredible. There is a little bit of warping as the hair moves around. Apart from that, it looks great. And here's the video of the tiger with the new settings. It just helps bring out that realism. And here are a few more videos that I've created. I think a lot of them look really realistic. If I was scrolling on my phone and one of these videos popped up, I would not be able to tell it was AI. All right, so we've reached the end of this video and it's pretty mind blowing at how realistic AI is getting now. There is still some work to do on the video side of things, but for AI images, I really can't tell the difference sometimes if it's real or not. If you do end up using this software, please be responsible with it. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. If you have any tips or tricks on how to create realistic images and videos, please leave your comments down below. And if you'd like to watch one of our other videos, feel free to click on the image you can see on screen. Thanks for watching.